I've done my best to assemble what I think are the things that we can accomplish, the things we should accomplish, and the things that are our highest priorities. And for me, those decisions were based on a few key um, elements. First, when we met for the first time last year, we faced a balance of a $5.2 billion deficit and what I believe to be a mandate to resolve that deficit without raising taxes. And I believe that the fiscal discipline of the members of the legislature and by agreement of the governor have successfully charted a course of fiscal discipline that is paying off. And, and we see that now in a surplus of $1.2 billion and we're hopeful that will that growth in the economy will continue. Second, I think the highest priority for this committee and for most of us here at the Capitol is uh, competitiveness. We want Minnesota's tax climate to be competitive so we can compete in a larger national and even global economy. Third is the concern that many of us have with the complexity of our tax code in Minnesota. Simplification is very important and um, in a high priority. We talked a lot last year about federal conformity and how complex it is for Minnesotans to file their tax returns when we do not conform. We've also talked a lot about encouraging economic activity, which I think is among our very highest goals here this year, and that, in my view, takes three forms in this bill. One is to encourage job growth. The second is to encourage an entrepreneurship, and the third, capital investment. Finally, I think um, for purposes of this bill, making long-term and sustainable improvements in the tax code and adding certainty are also at a premium. We have gotten through a significant recession. We have drawn down our reserves. We have had shifts. We have weakened the financial situation of the state markedly in recent years. The last two forecasts have been positive, and they've helped us restore some of our reserves, and this bill takes us going the other way. It uses $100 million uh, to help uh, finance short-term uh, needs, as well as adds to the structural gap in the 14 and 15 biennium. The, this is taking us the wrong direction, and so I would uh, like to make sure that we underscore our opposition and concerns with using the budget reserves for any current resource needs. Stimulating economic recovery is not a short-term problem. It is a long-term problem for the state of Minnesota. And what we've proposed is long-term sustainable solutions and encouragement and growth. The um, repeal of the state general levy would occur over many years. It will create a structural deficit, but it also will encourage growth in the economy by allowing these businesses across the state of Minnesota to reinvest those dollars, which is where what we need to occur here. You said pay as you go. Commissioner, I'm so glad you said that because this bill encourages you and your counterparts in the administration to help us identify the reductions we need to pay as you go. And so you have a seat at the table, Commissioner. You're here this morning. I'm so glad you are. And when Commissioner Franz comes back to work with us, I hope you'll be there too. Because I think that no, there's no one better in the whole state of Minnesota to help us find the reductions we need to prioritize this bill than you. There's nobody better. And so I encourage you to look at this bill, go back to your budgets, which are $35.2 billion for this biennium, and help us find about one quarter of 1% to help stimulate, e stimulate economic growth on behalf of the residents of the state of Minnesota.